Hello, Professor Race here to talk about misplaced and dangling modifiers. First of all, a modifier is a word or a group of words that describes something else in the sentence. Two different errors can be created by misusing modifiers. There is the misplaced modifier error, which is usually marked with an MM, or there is the dangling modifier error. And we'll talk about both. A misplaced modifier describes the wrong element in a sentence because it has been incorrectly placed. Here is an example. We could watch the stars sitting on the balcony. Sitting on the balcony is our modifier in the sentence. And the thing about modifiers is they want to usually grab the closest noun or pronoun to describe. In this case, it sounds like the stars are sitting on the balcony. In actual fact, we is supposed to be what is sitting on the balcony or who is sitting on the balcony. So to fix this, to place the modifier in the correct position, we can move it to the beginning of the sentence, sitting on the balcony, put a comma after it. Now, sitting on the balcony modifies the correct word, we, in the sentence. Now, we do have some one-word modifiers. They're called one-word limiting modifiers. And in most cases, these one-word limiting modifiers are placed directly before the words they are supposed to modify. These are the one-word limiting modifiers, almost, even, exactly, hardly, just, merely, nearly, only, scarcely, simply, and not. Notice how the meaning of this sentence changes as we move the modifier only. She headed into the snowstorm wearing her only coat. That means that she had one coat because only is describing coat in this case. She headed into the snowstorm wearing only her coat. In this case, only seems to be describing wearing, in which case we interpret the sentence to mean that she had on a coat, but perhaps she had no other protective clothing on, such as gloves, a scarf, and maybe boots. Take a look at this sentence, I got a B on the French test. We can take the modifier only and introduce it into the sentence in several different places. Notice how the meaning of the sentence changes every time we move only. Only I got a B on the French test. In this case, only is modifying I. In other words, apparently I was the only student in the whole class who received a B on that test. I got only a B. Only a B indicates that apparently I was expecting to get a higher grade than that, and instead I received a B. I got a B only on the French test. Apparently, I had more than one test. Perhaps I had a test in math and English as well, but apparently I made a B on only the French test that I took. And then finally, I got to be on the only French test. Apparently, we have had only one test in that French class so far, and I made a B on that one test. So notice, just moving the word only to different spots in this one sentence completely changes the meaning of the sentence each time. Okay. Here's another example of a misplaced limiting modifiers. It had nearly taken her two hours only to go five miles. Nearly taken. Nearly wants to modify the word taken that comes right after it, but really that's not accurate. Nearly really needs to modify how long it took her to go five miles. 
which is two hours. Only to go, only sounds like it's trying to modify this infinitive to go, but really only needs to modify the distance of five miles. So sometimes we need to pay close attention to where we're placing these one word limiting modifiers. Make sure we're putting them pretty much right in front of or right before the words they're supposed to describe. We want to be accurate. Okay, now for dangling modifiers. When an opening modifier is not followed by the word it describes, it is a dangling modifier. Here is an example. Trying to eat a hot dog, my bike swerved off the path. Notice, trying to eat a hot dog is our opening modifier, but it is dangling, and here is why. It is not followed immediately by the word that it is supposed to be describing. Instead, it sounds like the bike is trying to eat the hot dog because it is the noun that comes immediately after the opening modifier. And that's not right. It's not the bike trying to eat the hot dog. I'm trying to eat the hot dog. But unfortunately, the pronoun I does not even appear in this sentence. So we're going to need to fix this. And we will add the pronoun I into the sentence. There are a couple of ways we can do that. And we'll take a look. Now let's talk about how to correct a dangling modifier. One option is to add the word being modified right after the opening modifier. So here is that example, trying to eat a hot dog. I swerved off the path on my bike. Now this is correct because I am the one trying to eat a hot dog and while I was doing that, I swerved off the path on my bike. A second option for correcting a dangling modifier is to add the word being modified into the opening modifier itself. Here's what that sounds like. While I was trying to eat a hot dog, my bike swerved off the path. So that's a second option. Let's try another one. The old Marlboro ads depicted a man on a horse smoking a cigarette. Smoking a cigarette. There's our modifier right there. What does it sound like is happening here? Sounds like the horse is smoking. That's not what we want this sentence to say. So let's revise that to say the old Marlboro ads depicted a man smoking a cigarette on horseback. Now we have moved that modifier into the middle of the sentence so that it comes right after man the word, the noun, that it is supposed to be describing. Although I changed my mind later, I almost bought a puppy from a man that was housebroken. Well, we do hope that he was housebroken, but it sounds like the man was housebroken instead of the puppy. So let's change the sentence up to make that correct. Although I changed my mind later, I almost brought, bought a housebroken puppy from a man. Walking home that day, the sun seemed unusually warm. Here's a dangling modifier. Walking home that day because it has nothing to grab onto. The sun is not doing the walking, so the sun is not the word that we're supposed to be modifying here. This would be a dangling modifier. Here's a revision. While I walked home that day, the sun seemed unusually warm. While driving to school, the right front tire went flat. Here's an opening modifier right here. While driving to school, Problem is, it is not followed immediately by the word it is supposed to modify. In fact, there is no driver mentioned in the sentence, and that is a problem. It sounds like the tire is doing the driving here, and that is not correct. So let's revise that to say, while I was driving to school, the right front tire went flat. Taking our seats, the game started. 
again, an opening modifier here. But it's not the game taking our seats. We are the ones taking our seats. But the word we is missing from this sentence. So that's an example of a dangling modifier here. So we can revise that to say, as we took our seats, the game started. As a young lady growing up in the rural South, many young men tried to court Miss Emily. We have an opening modifier here, as a young lady growing up in the rural South. Obviously, this is supposed to be describing Miss Emily. The problem is, it sounds like it's the many young men. And that's confusing because this is what comes right after the opening modifier. So this is an example of a dangling modifier. So we need to rewrite, rearrange this sentence. Many young men tried to court Miss Emily, comma, a young lady growing up in the rural south. Just moving the modifier to the end of the sentence fixes that problem with the dangling modifier. And one more, Miss Emily Grierson was too fragile to believe her father had passed away mentally and emotionally. Mentally and emotionally. Well, that would describe Miss Emily Grierson, but in this sentence, it sounds like the father. It's describing the father because remember, modifiers usually want to grab the closest noun or pronoun or phrase to describe. So this would be an example of a misplaced modifier. So a revision of this could be Miss Emily Grierson was too fragile mentally and emotionally to believe her father had passed away. All right, good luck with using modifiers correctly.